Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friend, Steve Porter. Hello. Denny Sunderly. Hi there. And our associate producer, Corey Fiascanaro. Hi, guys. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about the top five family-friendly restaurants that have good food. <laughs> and and then we're going to talk about the ones Fiasco likes. <laughs> okay? Um, Poor Fiasco. And we had a, we just, we had a brief discussion uh, before we started recording about uh, what should be on this list. And we just kind of went, obviously, off our own personal experiences with the food, uh, but also what is... Generally, these restaurants are all generally considered to be really great family-friendly locations and also have better than average better than average food because this has been a point of contention for a while now that I've said that a lot of times parents have to sacrifice having good food in order to get a certain experience that their kids will enjoy and I don't think those two things need to be mutually exclusive so uh, this list kind of highlights those that aren't, that, that you're going to get both. Um, so this is in no particular order, but let's start off with the first one. I r- highly, highly agree with this one, Garden Grill. Mm-hmm. Over at the land uh, in Epcot, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, yep. mm-hmm. um, character meals, character interaction at this restaurant is absolutely so fantastic. Good. Mm-hmm. So good. And I don't want to overlook the fact that you're on a rotating turntable, which kids will think is really amazing and really cool and something they've yeah. never seen. And it's before. it's it's uh, overlooking the attraction, the yeah. land attraction. Yeah. So as you as you rotate, you're overlooking living you're, with the land, living with different scenes and living amazing. with the land. It's just amazing. And yet the character, you're exactly right. Character interaction is amazing. They the on the on the occasions we've been there, they'll come back around again oh, and yeah. mm-hmm. um and play with you and try to eat your food and the food is brought, it's family style, it's mm-hmm. served family style, and so that's nice. Everything literally comes to your table. You don't have to get up and go to a buffet. Mm-hmm. So if you have little ones that are hard to wrangle and you actually have them kind of controlled in that moment, it's perfect because Mickey's going to come to you in his little farmer suit, and he's just as cute as he can be, and all the food will come to you. The food is good. It is good. It mm-hmm. is really, really yeah. good. And um, And this is across all three... All, all three uh, dishes, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, because I've eaten multiple times breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. And every time I walk out saying, wow, this is really, really, really and, good. Yeah. It's not also, uh, being someone that's not overly adventurous, it's not crazy no, not at all. that kids nope. are going to hate. It's fairly simple food like dinner, you're going to be able to find mac and cheese and different great options. Yeah, I mean, there are a variety of character dining experiences that are similar to this one. Like you think of Ohana, and there's a few others. Um, but this is my favorite of those ones. And the first thing that comes to mind, because this this location was a tradition for me and Haley, and we don't even have kids, that's cinnamon bun. Oh, It's oh, good yeah. for all so, ages. For oh, sure. yeah. It's so no, good. absolutely. I'm right there with yeah. you on that. Yeah. I'm right there with you on that. All right. Uh, number two, another one that I am... Very, very, very much behind. Hoop de doo over at Fort Wilderness. Longest running dinner show. Let me put my phone down. Um, longest running dinner show in uh, in America. It's been running since the 70s. It's pretty much the same show. Um, it is kind of kitschy and corny, but incredibly entertaining. And the food. The food so is good. out of this world. Fried chicken, ribs, cornbread like you have never had before. Uh, it is the best cornbread I've ever tasted. The recipe, I make it every Thanksgiving because I got the recipe. I need that Ooh. recipe. Then. Well, okay. you need to get a lot of sugar. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> there's a lot of sugar in this cornbread. Okay. Um, and, uh, it, it, but it's the easiest thing in the world to make. Okay. I'm going to tell you, it's like crazy. It's you like a few ingredients, language. you know. Whip them together, throw it in, throw it in, and it's done. And it is so, so good. Awesome. Um, plus, you know, for parents, um, a beer and wine, I think. It's beer and wine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, beer and, and wine. And sangria. And sangria. And sangria um, is, uh, is included, and it's pretty much bottomless. So, uh, you and the kids, like, I was just in there about a month, not maybe two months ago, and the kids 
in that place were going nuts in the best possible way. Um, it's so having, entertaining and interactive. It is. It is. You know. It just it makes me. I get that. I have that that character anxiety when they when they come up to you. Like I will never get up on stage, but when I was there a month ago, um, you know, one of the, one of the women came and sat on my lap <laughs> and was doing this whole thing, and I get, I just get. When oh. that happens, that gives me so much. And they put a spotlight on you. And I was like, oh, my God, this is awful. Oh. But it was cute. It was cute. Okay. Um, and she kept coming back to me throughout the entire show. I'm like, oh, I just want to crawl to this you table sat right in a now. You good little seat, didn't you? Yeah. Bless your heart. But oh. they were, I mean, it was, but the show is amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's absolutely amazing. And the food is absolutely amazing. You don't yep. really have to choose between those two experiences. Yeah, and they'll, they'll pass out like washboards to the kids and the kids can play music right along with everything that's going on on stage. There's something for them to do to keep their, their hands busy, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about, oh, my kid is you know, too loud. You, you can't be too loud. Not a hoop to do. <laughs> too loud is A-OK. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but you got to think about the value that you're getting. You're getting a show, and you're getting all-you-can-eat food, and mm-hmm. it's all-you-can-eat I have food. never once walked out of hoop to do review yep. feeling like... You didn't get a value for it, yeah. That I got a deal. Yeah. I got a deal that even though it was... What, like $70? $70. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you want, if you want on the floor, mm-hmm. which is really where you want to be. Right. Although I probably should start going up you, into the balcony. Yeah, there's no character interaction. <laughs> there's no character page, interaction up so. there. Um, but uh, no, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Have you done a fiasco? I did. I, I was going to save the story since I already told it uh, on our favorite shows, uh, Restaurant with Shows uh, segment. But I went when I was about eight and I did get sick. And I have not been back since I was eight. Oh, you wow. Need to go wow. Have a good yeah, you need experience. to go back. Yeah. yeah. Got to get back there. Yeah. Well, that explains why he likes some of the restaurants he likes. Because <laughs> <laughs> the good stuff really made him sick. Oh, um, no. um, oh, dear. Steve, you've done it, obviously. Oh, yeah. I've done it a handful of times. I love Hoop Dee Doo. It's kind of, it's crazy because it's old timey fun, but little kids still, it like still translates. Mm-hmm. And so old people love it, young people love it. It seems like, whether you're five years old or 50 years old or much older, everyone loves it. So I think it's it's great for multi-generational families. Grandpa and grandma are going to love it as much as, you know, the, the grandchildren. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, next on our list, another favorite 50s primetime cafe over in Hollywood Studios. Absolutely. Um, one of the most genius concepts for a restaurant Right, mm-hmm. uh, the especially when you get a server who's really in, the and role. you're in, That's fun. And they're really yeah. right. They're really in the role of your cousin. Yes, and you're at you know you're at mom's kitchen, mom's kitchen table, and you got to eat all your vegetables. And if you're caught saying something you shouldn't, you get called a potty mouth, and you'll get put in the corner. Um, they'll do the air if you don't finish your vegetables. Oh. They'll take it. They'll take the fork and do the airplane <laughs> uh, to feed. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really cool. And the meatloaf and the fried chicken are so good. The pot roast is my fave. And the peanut butter and jelly milkshake, as weird as that sound is, sounds, is also really delicious. And it's also virtually impossible to get a table there because it's so popular. It's so good. That is it one is. thing I will say about this: Garden Grill and Hoopty Doo aren't that hard to get. Mm-hmm. But when we start getting into uh, 50s prime time, yeah. um, that's, a, that's a little bit more challenging. Yeah. So that's one of the ones you definitely want to go six months out. You do. And, and it's so much fun for the kids. There is, there's something to look at. You've got a TV near you that's playing different clips from 50s sitcoms. And like you said, if you're willing to play along, it is so much fun because your server will also. Um, we, you know, back in the day on one of our vacations down here, our server sent grandma back to the bathroom to wash her hands. And it's <laughs> something that my kids at 24 and 20 still talk about. <laughs> it's awesome. It's I so fun. I think it's because kids think it's hilarious when their parents are being treated like kids. Yes. Because they're like, ha, ha, ha. Like, <laughs> right, it's a little. Yeah, like they get kind of a gotcha. little bit of a revenge. See now, <laughs> what I did to my nephew James, he still talks about this to this day when he had been down. This is, you know, I think he was about 15. 
mm-hmm. uh, 15 or 16. He's in his 30s now. But he'd come down, and we went there, and I distract him. I said, what the hell is that over there? And then I took all my string beans and put it onto his plate. Oh. And when the server came back, I said, he will not eat his oh. cream beans. He's like, those aren't mine. Those are his. And they did the whole thing with them. Oh. They put them in the corner. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was great. It was great. He still And he still talks about that. That's awesome. He still talks about that. So, um, now, have you done fifties prime time? Yeah, I have. I've done it. I've done it once, and I had a similar experience. It was with uh, me, Haley, my mom, and my brother, and it was a lot of fun. I haven't made it back there. There, I do have my go-to at Hollywood Studios, though. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> we will. Um, another one, arguably the best buffet on property. Said it many, many, many times. Tusker House, mm-hmm. over in Animal Kingdom. <clears throat> Again, breakfast, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner available there. Character interaction is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Plus, the variety of what is on the buffet between the standards that, you know, the, the standards you know, mm-hmm. and then because of its location in the uh, Africa section of Animal Kingdom... A lot of uh, items that are African in- inspired. So your b- Bobodi and mm-hmm. uh, some of the spices, um, mm-hmm. just different flavor profiles. And don't be scared; it's not scary. It's all very approachable. And they do have kids' favorites, mm-hmm. so your kids have what they like. And plus, they might feel really kind of proud of themselves but one for of the, trying something. One of the things I really appreciate about it is that while the uh, more exotic stuff is still very, very approachable. There is plenty there for people who are like, no, nah, no, nah, I just want to stick with what I know. Mm-hmm. So it really threads that needle of giving you kind of the best of both worlds, giving your kids what they want, mm-hmm. plus great character interaction. Again, nobody has to sacrifice right. a great meal right. and a great experience for the entire family mm-hmm. yep. when they eat at a place like this. Yeah. So and the characters are in their safari suits. Yes. So that's that's just so much fun. Um, and the environment, the restaurant, the physical space itself. I've taken so many pictures in that space over the years. Oh, yeah. It's just beautifully detailed. The theming is over the top. Um, and it's just it's a winner. winner Absolutely. Winner, chicken dinner. And I'm going to throw it over to you too. On Tusker House. Oh yeah, I mean Tusker House is outstanding. I think the the recommendation I would make there is if you can time it up right, they have like this weird in between meals, kind of when they're setting up the buffet for dinner right after lunch. Um, I think it's at like two thirty ish or maybe three, where you can still get a reservation right at the end. And the characters then there's not that many people left in the restaurant because they've kind of the wave of lunch is gone, but the the dinner wave hasn't really come in yet. And me and Rhino did a a review like two or three years ago. It was a long time at this point. But literally, we were eating, and like the characters are just like hanging out, (laughs) sitting at our table. And it was like, because we were probably one of 10 people in the entire place. Wow. So they were just hanging out with us, and it was like they were sitting and having the meal with us. And we got all these fun selfies and pictures because we didn't have – you know, we could take as much time as we wanted with them because the, those the character performers were just willing to hang out with us, and it was so awesome. That's neat. And one of the things about the, those shoulder times, you know, when it starts getting between the end of breakfast, beginning of lunch, and end of lunch, and beginning of dinner, is there is a point where there's a mix of items True. on the mm-hmm. uh, on the buffet. So it's not unusual if you're there for breakfast, um, where some lunch items start coming out. <laughs> and you can kind of get a little bit, a little bit of both. So interesting. Uh, now you've done it, right? No, Tusker? I've never been to Tusker House. Oh. You would so love it. Got to bring my kids there. Oh. And see how family friendly we are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're a lizard. Well, maybe yeah, you can lizard. skip. <laughs> my, my kid lizard. Maybe you can skip one of those visits to Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. Um, and try, uh, yeah. try Tusker House. All right. Um, then there is. Uh, we actually should have done this right after uh, Hoopty Doo, but. Uh, Trails End over again at Fort Wilderness. So good. There is something that grandma and grandpa are going to love, and there's something that the kids are going to love, and everyone in between. Um, and it is so good. We find ourselves over there a lot. Like we'll do birthday dinners there. It is, and, and getting to Trails End is part of the fun. 
because you can take a boat, like say you're in the Magic Kingdom, you get to get on a boat to go over to Fort Wilderness and then walk up to Trails End, or you can park and take the internal bus system over to Trails End, and there's horses that you see on the way, and so that's part of the part of the fun of getting to eat at Trails End is just in getting there. It feels, like, so, it feels like an adventure. It is. Yeah. yeah. So as we're recording this, it's November fourth, but I was just there for Halloween night, and we went to we went to Trails End. It's fantastic food, just mm-hmm. like Hoop de Doo. It's the same it's the same kitchen, so it's just like we were talking about. The fried chicken's amazing. Everything about it, the food is great. They actually also have. Uh, mac and cheese there which you can order at hoop de doo but it's you don't even have to ask for it at, for the buffet at trails end but once you're done if you go during some of the seasonal times of the year and you walk around uh the resort which if you've never stayed there before it's worth doing for those holiday times because i'm telling you halloween night was so cool I there it was just i mean i could ho- go into a whole rant about it which i won't because it would be 20 minutes long rant no, no, but no. Get a, a good, a good thing. A good, a good thing. A okay. Good rant. Uh, 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 uh. I was gonna say. He could yeah, go no. on so and on. I just I to could explain. Go on and on. Let me just explain what he's what he's talking about. Uh, uh, Fort Wilderness is predominantly a campground. They do have uh, cabins that are more traditional hotel rooms, but it's a campground, and it has been around since the early to mid seventies, I believe, and it a, a lot of the people that stay there go back. Year after year, they stay for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got folks bringing these like killer luxury Winnebago's in there that are nicer than most hotel rooms. Um, but what a lot of these folks do is they will decorate their campsites uh, around the holidays. So for Halloween and Christmas in particular, but also also Fourth of July. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. And uh, but when you get Halloween, Christmas, it's insane. The, it is some of the coolest stuff. What people do mm-hmm. to these campsites is incredible. It's insane. Yeah, the, they had one of them was a full on uh, haunted mansion uh, like set piece where you they had a whole uh, like the candle floating scene. Then they had uh, Madame Leota, and it was literally a woman in a globe doing the spiel over and over oh, for like my four word. hours. Wow! And she had like an ice pack uh, ch- uh, uh, thing over her her dry her, ice her, was. Her, the- or her body to keep her cool because oh it was kind of warm that night. Oh, it was an actual person. It was an actual person oh, doing this time. meal all night. Wow. And they had the whole shebang. It was, like, incredible. Um, they should be giving out awards for this They stuff. really yeah. should. Disney should give – they really should give awards. Um, but worth checking out after a meal at Trails End around the, the holidays. Oh, um, also, um, uh, Fort Wilderness is – Unique mm-hmm. among all mm-hmm. Walt Disney World resorts, um, it is uh, it is a world unto itself. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a community, and it's a community, it and you feel that when you stay there, even if you're not one of the people who camps every year or multiple times a year. Um, uh, I love the cabins, um, and what's really cool is you can get to go food from Trails End nice. if you're staying. There, you can get to go food and bring it back to your cabin or your campsite. Um, but uh, and also, uh, I don't have the pricing in front of me, but you will find the buffet at for breakfast and dinner uh, at Trails End because that's all they say. They don't do lunch, it's right. breakfast and dinner, uh, among the most reasonably priced. I want to say dinner, the dinner buffet was like $28 per adult. I think it varies depending on time of year. But, yes, because I think it can get up to thirty four ninety nine. But still, even at thirty four oh, ninety nine, g- good luck finding good yep. food at a Disney buffet for thirty five bucks for an adult. Yeah, and the breakfast. If you go at breakfast, it's amazing. It is. It's amazing. phenomenal. Amazing, and there'll be something for the entire family there. All right, so let's give some love to uh, Fiasco's yeah. some of Fiasco's choices. We booed him out of the room um, earlier. We Poor booed him out of the room <laughs> with these. Um, but I know one of your favorite places for you and your wife to go is Sci-Fi Dine-In. It is. And so I, I, I don't think anybody in the room is disagreeing with me that it, it is a good place for kids. You know, Absolutely. You've you got that entertainment mm-hmm. going on all the time. I think the, uh, the thing where we, where we kind of split paths here is the quality of the food. Um, and, you know, we've had this discussion before. That turkey club, I swear by it. I actually had a couple of people 
uh, come up to me in the park the other day saying like, we went to Sci-Fi, we tried your Turkey Club. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And I'm like, I told you so, it's so good. But I, uh, I will say I've been to Sci-Fi. I've gone, you know, a lot throughout all the years. It's always been my one of my family. Yeah, it's absolutely too. one of your favorites. Yeah, but so for a while though, like I'd try different items and I'd be like, uh, the food's like whatever. It wasn't until I landed on that turkey club where I was like, I just die for it so, every day. So you, um, you really, the reason you kept going back was you really loved that atmosphere. You really liked that whole, the right. whole theming of it. Yeah. So it was like, a, it was like a vacation. It was like a spot during my family's vacation. They always wanted to go because of the theming. Okay. And I always thought the food was so, so until I landed on that sandwich and then everything changed for me. And now I'm, I'm thinking about it right now. I kind of want to go there for dinner, oh. <laughs> but it is hard to get a reservation. That's hard to get yeah. into as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, now, Rainforest Cafe uh, w- uh, is another one that you like. Yes. Um, now, are we talking about the one in Disney Springs, the one at Animal Kingdom, or both? Uh, both, but mostly the one in Disney Springs. Uh, it's been there forever. Uh, this was a place that I, it was my number one choice as a kid of where I wanted to go when we were on vacation. Like that, like every time we were here, it was like the first thing we did all right, let's go to Disney Springs and get. Corey Rainforest Cafe because he's not going to stop asking until we get it done. And I loved Rainforest Cafe so much as a kid that we had one in Massachusetts in a town called Burlington, which was two and a half hours away from where we lived. And when we were back home on my birthday, I was like, that's what I need for my birthday. I need Rainforest Cafe. Fast forward, I'm 29 years old, still a kid at heart, but Rainforest Cafe is still a place that I visit frequently. I have gotten plenty of entrees there that I thought were just terrible. But I go there, and I have the two things I get. I like the coconut shrimp. I like the pastalaya, which is their take on, like, jambalaya. Get those two things every time, and it's great every time. But, again, I understand the punches that are thrown. But as far as the atmosphere, too, it's just awesome for kids. Uh, It's, you know, already pretty loud. So if your kids like to be loud, it's not a problem really on anybody. But, uh yeah. Well, I, I was telling these guys before we started recording, we were talking about these, that uh, last month I was in Disneyland Paris. And in their downtown Disney, they have a rainforest cafe. And uh, Sean, myself, and another uh, another couple um, were looking for a place to eat, and rainforest was convenient. And so we popped in. And I got to tell you, it was the best meal we had. And not just it was not just the best meal we had in Disneyland Paris. It was the best meal we had in Paris, which is saying something. Now that's a that's a that's a more of a comment on the places Adventures by Disney picks, and we'll get into that in another show. But um, what I did notice was they toned down the constant, you know. The gorillas. Gorillas and elephants yes. and rain and stuff. It happened, but it wasn't like, oh, it's five minutes, so let's you stop your conversation so that, you know. Um, I get why kids love it. I absolutely get why kids love it. But yeah. in this particular instance, the food and the service were so good. And all four of us at the table were Disney World vets, right? We were... Yeah. And, Everybody was saying the same thing. Why can't ours be this good? Mm. Um, it is the only time I've eaten at a rainforest cafe where I've said, okay, this food is good. This food is good. Um, I would also like to mention one thing. Uh, if Rainforest Cafe, Yak and Yeti, T-Rex are restaurants that you think you might go to on a more than one-time basis, uh, definitely get the Landry's card because you kind, of, oh, yeah. you kind of do get the VIP treatment if you have that card. They always have, regardless of how booked up the restaurant is, they always have uh, seats put aside for their Landry's members. So sometimes I've showed up with a reservation for, say, 7 o'clock, and we got seated at 7.15, but we showed up on a Friday night completely jam-packed, no reservation. You show your Landry's card, and if they have Landry's member tables available, you just walk right past the line and you get seated. Wow. And also the Landry's members always get greeted by a manager halfway through their meal to check on them and see if 
And also That's there are nice. discounts and uh, things that go along. I've heard that the Landry's yeah. thing is really, really good. So uh, if you break it down on a percentage uh, scale, it's like just about as good as an annual pass discount. Uh, it's about every $250 you spend, you get a $25 gift card. That's good for the... It's about 10% ulti- yeah. ultimately. Yeah. Now, does that work? Because um, Landry's has T-Rex. They have Rainforest Cafe. They also have Yak and Yeti. Yes. Yeah, it works at all of them. So it also works at Yak and Yeti. Yep. Okay, that's a really good tip. Yep. Um, and you also had your honor- honorable mention, uh, Boma, yes. over at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yeah, so if you have older <coughs> children in your traveling party, sometimes they kind of find, they fall into no man's land. Um, and they have voracious appetites. And so we have found with our family, Boma has been a really great, you know, just a few, the kids are older now, but uh, a few years ago when our eldest was a teenager, you know, this was perfect and it still is perfect because we've gone within the last handful of years there is something to impress even the teenagers in the family at boma it's um there's stuff for kids so you've got your mac and cheese and you've got your little you know hot dog nuggets but you also have things that are african inspired that have that spice and that play flavor profile that's inspired by africa so it's kind of cool stuff and there's plenty of it so I also yep. can see great. some teens liking it because it's an option where maybe if they're at an age where they're too cool for character dining, like mm-hmm. they don't want to feel like our, even though I love character dining, but there is like a certain phase of teenagers that maybe would feel like they're being treated like a baby because yeah. they're going to character yeah. dining, that that would be a perfect option. Yep. And it's a beautiful space. So, and it's all you can eat because it's a buffet. It's a great thing. All right. So there you have it, our list of best places, uh, our, our picks for best places, uh, best family-friendly restaurants. We had Garden Grill, Hoop de doo Tusker House, 50s Prime Time Cafe, and Trails. And with special mentions, honorable mentions for Rainforest Cafe, Sci-Fi Dine-In, and Boma. So there you have it. That's our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next week with another episode of the Disney Dining Show. Have a great week, folks.